Docklands has been changing fast. In 2013, I went on the then new cable car and took a couple of pictures. I visited again in 2015 and in 2023 to see what has changed. A lot. And judging by the amount of building work going on, it continues to do so. I will cover a bit about the cable car and then some of the sights and changes over the last decade. Please stay to the end for all the details. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images. The cable car runs between these two landing points, one on each side of the river, both by memorable buildings. The Millennium Dome or O2 is here, and this is the landing point for this side. And on the other side of the river, this is the landing point, and it's right next door to the Crystal, or what is now called City Hall, where the GLA headquarters are. For reference, the Thames Barrow is just along the river here. Starting with the cable car itself, its current official name is the IFS Cloud Cable Car, reflecting the sponsorship deal. It goes 90 metres or 295 foot up, so it gives spectacular views on a clear day, as we can see here. It opened in 2012, and when I went on it in 2013, it actually had a different name due to the earlier sponsor. For the first 10 years, it was called the Emirates Airlines. If we look at this old photo, we can actually see the different logo on the cars. This is the area around the takeoff point in 2015, and then from a nearby location in 2023. This gives a real feel for the expansion in the area. The number of extra buildings is considerable. Some facts and figures. There's actually a small sign that can be seen through the cable car's window before it goes up that says in addition to the car carrying 10 people, it has a length of 1,103 metres or 3,619 foot and has a maximum speed of 6 metres a second or 20 foot per second. Looking towards North Greenwich in 2013, the Millennium Dome or O2 dominates the area with lots of empty land nearby. Moving to 2023 and the view is very different with new buildings making it more difficult to actually see the dome from the cable car. In the distance, we can just about see one Canada Square and the other blocks around it that dominated the view of the Isle of Dogs in 2013. Looking at another angle, as the dome is on the river edge, it is possible to see it from the other side of the Thames, seen here in 2015. And then again from the cable car in 2023, the main change is the building seen on the far right in 2015 have been completed and the area around One Canada Square on the Isle of Dogs has a lot more tall buildings. This is the landing site view on the dome side in 2013, just before the cable car comes into land. A few points to note. The land on the left is unused. There are mainly car parks behind and there's also an old gas holder. Looking at a similar view in 2023, the land to the left is now in use. There's a building next to some of the car park area, and most of it's still there, and the gas holder is gone. Also, in the bottom left of the picture, there is a 60 foot tall statue called Demon with Bowl by Damien Hurst that was put up in 2023. Approaching towards City Hall, the immediate environment around the landing stage hasn't changed much, but if you look up, down, left or right, it really has. Let's start by looking down. The land in the earlier photos looked very industrial or unused. If we look in 2023, we can see there is a massive underground construction going on. After a bit of research, I found out that this is actually the Silvertown Road Tunnel due to open in 2025. It will have two lanes going in each direction with the aim of reducing congestion going across the river. As this is such a prominent landmark at the moment with a cable car flying directly over it, it'd be very interesting to come back in a couple of years and see what the area looks like then. 
In 2013, I took a couple of pictures of a really striking building that we see as we come into land. I've only recently found out that this was then called the Crystal Building, but it has now been renamed City Hall, though it is hard to spot the new sign. The Greater London Assembly has met here since early 22. I've actually made a short video about the previous homes of London Government. Link at the end if you're interested. Zooming out from the cable car landing platform in 2015 and then looking in 2023, we can see the developments behind and to the side. It helps that it was a bright day as well. Looking towards the Thames barrier, the main thing that stands out as we move back from the barrier is that in the earlier pictures, there are a lot of boats moored on the Thames. In 2023, the boats are still there. But looking further in the distance, it is now actually a lot harder to see the Thames barrier than in 2013 due to all this new building. Looking at another picture from 2013, again we can see the Thames Barrier in the background. And as we move forward, we can see an industrial site. Moving to 2023, interestingly, we can see the industrial site is gone and it looks like it's being prepared for construction. And in the distance, we can again see that new build is now in front of this view of the Thames Barrier. Incidentally, in the distance, we can just make out the runway for London City Airport. Looking the other way from the Thames Barrier, towards Docklands and One Canada Square, and also the City of London beyond, we can see the area has been significantly developed by 2023. To show this incredible change, I've made a video showing Docklands between 1990s and 2020s. Link here. So in summary, massive change and judging by the amount of building work going on, much more on the way. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like and subscribe and click the alerts for future releases. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience, change seen through images.